Have you guys ever found yourself walking down the aisle and checking out all these adult diapers and just praying that you will never end up needing any of those? Well, today I'm gonna tell you five things that you should stop doing right now that can help improve your bladder health. And stick around till the end because the last one is the most surprising. I'm Dr. Rena Malik, urologist and pelvic surgeon, and if you're new here, I try to educate you guys on urologic content, react to different TV shows, and answer your questions. Number one, stop urinating just in case. So I know that as we grew up, our parents always made us go to the bathroom before we got in a long car ride, just in case. And this actually has a term. This is called convenience voiding, or voiding without the sensation that you need to urinate. And is this really damaging? Well, once in a while, it's probably not a big deal. But if you continually void just in case, meaning go to the bathroom just in case, your bladder will be signaling to your brain that you should start taking that volume of urine as meaning you're full, even though you're not really full. And so your brain will start interpreting lower volumes of bladder filling as being full and making you go to the bathroom more often. But are there any studies that really talk about this? Well, there was one study done in Australia where they had a questionnaire and gave it to college Age students between the ages of 16 and 35 and they asked them about their urinary habits as well as their fluid intake or what they drank and it's important to notice that in this age group it is not normal to wake up at night to urinate it is considered abnormal if you wake up to urinate even one time at night so what they found in this group was that those participants who admitted to convenience voiding or voiding just in case were 2.3 times more likely to wake up at night to urinate. Now we can't definitively say that voiding just in case caused the waking up at night, but it is a sign that this may be concerning for urinary problems down the road. So if you need to urinate before a long car ride once in a while, that's okay, but don't make a habit of it. Number two, quit smoking. So a lot of people don't know that smoking increases your risk of bladder cancer by by three times, three times. And why exactly is that? Well, there are 7,000 chemicals in tobacco and tobacco smoke. Of those, 70 are known to cause cancer. And when you smoke, these chemicals are released into the bloodstream. The chemicals are then filtered by your kidneys and then go into your urine, which sits in your bladder for sometimes hours at a time, putting you at a higher risk than people who don't smoke. Also, smoking is a bladder irritant, so it can also irritate the bladder lining and cause you to have to go to the bathroom more frequently or urgently, meaning you gotta go, gotta go. And lastly, it can also cause a chronic cough. And when you cough, you're actually increasing the pressure in your belly, which can in turn cause pressure on your bladder. And in some people who have a weak pelvic floor, they can leak when they're doing these types of activities like coughing, sneezing, lifting heavy things. So I know that quitting smoking is really, really hard, but there are a lot of great resources. If you can't make it to see your physician and ask for a smoking cessation clinic or someone who is trained in smoking cessation to help you with this, there are a number of resources available to you online. So I'm gonna link them down below in the description. Please check them out if you think you're ready to quit smoking. Number three is bladder irritants. And what exactly are bladder irritants? Well, they're substances that you can intake that can then irritate your bladder lining and for some people cause urinary symptoms. So bladder irritants that I often talk about are caffeine, alcohol, and for some people, spicy foods, acidic foods, artificial sweeteners, and in some cases, carbonated beverages. But while we know that ingesting bladder irritants can cause urinary symptoms after you put them in your body, what about five years down the line? Can these urinary symptoms get worse because you were taking a lot of bladder irritants at one point in time in your life? Well, the short answer is, I'm not 100% sure, but there's one study that looked at this, and this study looked at almost 5,000 people, and they asked them what they were drinking and 
what their urinary symptoms were. They did this at baseline or when they first introduced them into the study and then five years later. And they found interestingly different findings for men and women. For men, what they found was that if you were drinking two or more cups of coffee a day at baseline, you were more likely five years later to have urinary symptoms down the line. Now we don't again know that this caused this, but we know there is a linkage. Interestingly, in men, ingesting citrus juices was actually protective of having urinary symptoms. The thought behind this is that perhaps citrus juices have an anti-inflammatory or antioxidant effect, which is protective in the prostate area. And so that can actually improve your urinary symptoms down the line. For women, interestingly, we did not find that drinking coffee at baseline changed their urinary symptoms five years later. But women who increased their their caffeine intake over that period of time were more likely to have urinary symptoms, specifically urinary urgency or the sudden desire to go to the bathroom that you can't delay. They also found similar findings for soda as well as diet caffeinated soda being linked with worse urinary symptoms. Number four, stop dehydrating yourself so that you pee less often. And the reason for this is that when you drink less fluid, your urine gets more concentrated. So when you look in the toilet, you'll see that your urine is more of a dark yellow or like an amber color rather than a light yellow color, which is what it should be. If you're curious about what your urine color means, check out my video on exactly that topic. So when you have concentrated urine, that urine can actually irritate the bladder lining and make you have more irritative symptoms, meaning it may make you feel like you have to go to the bathroom, but when you get there, you actually don't urinate quite that much. This can also be a risk for people having recurrent urinary tract infections. I go into this in much more detail in my video on recurrent UTIs, but increasing your fluid intake is the number one way to reduce your risk of recurrent urinary tract infections. Number five is don't hold your urine for long periods of time. And the reason for this is that occasionally, we all do this, right? When you're busy doing something and you get the urge to go, you say, you know what, I'll go in a few minutes, let me finish what I'm doing. And that's okay, once in a while it's not a big deal. But if you make a habit of it, your bladder muscle itself can get weakened over time. And it can also lead to certain things like pelvic floor dysfunction, which can make it harder for you to empty your bladder when you do finally go. And over time, that can cause a number of different problems. One, if your muscle gets very weak over many, many years, you can just stop urinating. That doesn't happen very often, but it can happen. It can make it so when you do urinate, you're not completely emptying your bladder, and that urine just sits in your bladder for much longer. And when that urine sits in your bladder for a longer period of time, it can put you at risk for getting urinary tract infections because you're not completely emptying your bladder. So it's okay to do it once in a while, but don't ignore your urge all the time because it can lead to severe problems down the line. Okay, that's it. Next week, I'm gonna be talking about a few things that women specifically should stop doing right now to improve their bladder health. So please make sure you share my channel with all your female friends and make them subscribe so they don't miss my video next week. Also on Friday, I'm gonna be sharing a part of my Instagram Live where I talk about bowel problems with Dr. Kumkum Patel, a gastroenterologist, because the bowels are actually very tightly interrelated with the bladder. So make sure you check it out. Thanks so much for watching and always remember to take care of yourself because you're worth it.